Welcome to my class. I'm Drew Collip. In today's class, we're going to build on our word problems we talked about last day and systems of linear equations to solve some of these mixture word problems. Some of these calculations you'll learn today are directly applicable to your work in the laboratory. There are some formulas I want you to know. For now, we're just going to start without those formulas and do the math the hard way. I will then show you the formulas and hopefully it'll make your life that much easier. Let's examine our first example here. Box A has 40 marbles. 20% are red. Box B has 80 marbles. 45% are red. If the two boxes are mixed together, what percentage of the marbles will be red? What can be helpful is you can draw a little diagram to try and explain what's going on here. So we have box A, we have box B, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix those two boxes together. And I'm going to make a new box, we'll call it box C. The information we have here, 20% are red in this one, 45% are red in this one, and we want to know what percentage is red in our final one. Sometimes drawing a diagram can help you visualize what's going on. Let's determine the number of red marbles we have in each of the boxes. Those will be our unknowns. Let X be the number of red marbles in box A. Let Y be the number of red marbles in B. And we'll say let Z be the percent red marbles in box C, our final box. Thinking back to our previous lecture on percentages, remember we can use proportionality to solve for percentages. If I talk about a percent, we're talking about per 100. So my percent would be the numerator above a denominator of 100. When I'm working with word problems and percent, remember, of references the denominator and is references the numerator. Let's use all this knowledge to try and solve this problem. I have box A, I have box B, and I have box C. Let's build three separate equations. I have three unknowns, I need three separate equations. Start with box A. Let's examine this, 20% are red, so that's our percentage right here, and the box has 40 marbles, that's our total value, that's our of here. So we're gonna sub those in. We have 20% is equal to, X is how many marbles are red, and 40 are our total marbles in box A. That's our first equation. Let's examine box B. Here we have 80 marbles and it's 45%. 45 percent. 45 per cent is 45 per 100. We're talking about Y marbles and how many total? There were 80 marbles total. So here's our second equation. Now my third equation. And talking about Z here. It's the percent. So this equation will be Z over 100. That's going to be the percentage of red marbles in the final box C, and this is going to be equal to, my numerator is the number of red marbles. I have X plus Y red marbles. On the bottom here, how many total marbles? Well, there were 40 marbles in box A, and there were 80 marbles in box B. So when I mix them together, this will be the total number of marbles, and this will be how many of the marbles are red. I have three unknowns, I have three equations. I can now solve this. Let's solve for X using box A, and we'll solve for Y using box B. We will then substitute those into my equation for box C. Let's do that now. Cross multiply. Divide both sides by 100. I have 8. Over here, cross multiply. Divide both sides by 100, I have 
36. What's my significant digits here? Technically, it's infinity. These are exact numbers. You can't have half a marble. If it's half a marble, it's not a marble. So technically, there would be an infinite number of significant digits here. I have eight red marbles in box A, and I have 36 red marbles in box B. Now that I have that, I'm going to substitute X in here, and I'm going to substitute Y in here. When I do that, Z over 100 equals 8 plus 36 divided by 40 plus 80 is 120. So by doing that, we have isolated Z on its own. Now I can solve that. Z over 100 equals 8 plus 36, which is 44, divided by 120. Cross multiply, 120Z equals 4,400. Divide both sides by 120. Those cancel out. Zeros cancel out. Z is equal to 440 divided by 12, 36.66666 repeating. What did I ask for here? I want to know the percentage of marbles that will be red. What is that? Percent of marbles that will be red, that's Z. So this is my final answer right here. Let's write my concluding statement. Here, you can see I've asked for this in two significant digits. Sometimes there can be issues with students understanding how to round properly. I don't want to worry about that for now. For now, I just want you to worry about getting the correct answer. Later on, we'll start worrying about significant digits again. So let's just round this to two significant digits. Therefore, there are 36.6 rounded off to two significant digits is 37%. 37% red marbles in the final box. So you can see to solve this, we had one box and another box. We mix them together. We made a new box made up of the components from box A and box B. This is similar to what you might be doing in the laboratory. You're taking one solution with a certain chemical inside, and you're taking another solution with a different concentration of the chemical inside. You'll mix them together, and we'll make a new final solution. Oftentimes that second solution is just water and the concentration is zero. We'll explore that more in detail moving forward. Here, we used our knowledge of systems of linear equations to solve this. By understanding a few special formulas from the laboratory, we can speed this up greatly. In the previous equation, I was looking at the percentage of red marbles in my final solution, my final total number of marbles. Now, when we go to the laboratory, instead of dealing with a number of marbles, we're going to deal with a concentration of a specific chemical. Here, we can look at a proportionality statement specific for chemicals. So we're dealing with a percent concentration. So percentage goes on the top. We have the amount of chemical, and we have the total amount of mixture. So this would be total solution, and this would be the amount of your chemical. If I have 50 grams of chemical in 100 grams total solution, that's a 50% weight by weight solution. We will look at this in more detail moving forward. Like the previous example, when I was mixing boxes with marbles and only certain ones were red, now we're going to talk about mixing different solutions. And they each have a different amount of a chemical in that solution. And I can mix as many chemicals as I want. I just keep adding them together. There's an equation here I'd like you to put to memory. We have our concentration of our chemical multiplied by the volume. That's of our first chemical. We can then add to that the concentration of my second chemical multiplied by the volume of that second chemical. And I can keep going until I get a final concentration and a final volume. Normally in the lab, we're not mixing more than two solutions. Oftentimes we're mixing one stock solution with water. So this is the equation I'd like you to commit to memory. C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. You will use this quite a bit. 
if we compare this to what we talked about before, this is our box A plus our box B equals box C. If I'm referencing the prior question involving marbles. But here, concentration is C and V is equal to the volume. Solutions can be solid, liquids, or gases. Please be aware of that. Now let's use this formula, C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF, on that marble question. Let's see how quickly we can solve this. So the equation, we're going to commit to memory, C1V1, concentration 1 times volume of 1, plus concentration 2 times volume 2 equals my final concentration multiplied by my final volume. We have box A, we have box B, and then we have our final box. So let's sub in. What's our concentration? Our concentration of red marbles is 20%. What's our volume? Well, here we're talking about a number of marbles. Usually we're talking about a number of milliliters, but here we're talking about number of marbles. Here we'll write 40 marbles. That's our units. Next up, we're going to add our C2. This was 45% red marbles and total marbles, 80 marbles. Let me just move that over. This is then equal to my final concentration times my final volume. What's my final volume? Well, I'm adding up these two here, right? I have 40 plus 80 marbles. So what I don't know is right here. I don't know what my final concentration is of red marbles. Let's solve that now. 20% of 40. Now, one thing you should understand is that when you're working with percentages, when you're multiplying those percentages with other numbers, you should convert those percentages over to decimals. We'll add those together, 120 marbles. We multiply those now. We have 0.2 times 40. We have 8 marbles. 0.45 times 80. 36 marbles. Finally, we have CF times 120 marbles. Let's now solve. Combine these together. We have 44 marbles is equal to CF times 120 marbles. I want to isolate my final concentration on its own, so I must divide both sides by 120 marbles. By doing that, you can see my marbles and my 120 cross off. Over here, you can see my units of marbles cancel each other out. I have marbles on the top and marbles on the bottom. Yes, units cancel the same way as numbers do. In the end, I have CF is equal to 44 over 120, which works out to 0 0.366666 repeating. What did I ask for? I asked for my percentage of red marbles. So I must convert my decimal over to a percent. We'll round off 37%. Therefore, the final concentration of red marbles is 37%. If I round off to two significant digits. Hopefully you can see how applicable this might be to your work in the laboratory working with all these word problems and systems of linear equations and percentages and fractions and canceling of units and rounding. It's all coming together now in this one problem. If you have a problem with any one of those concepts, you may not be able to fully solve this problem. I would advise you to go back and review those concepts you were unclear of.
Let's try a problem involving actual chemicals now. In this case, we're going to be talking about NaCl, also known as salt, sodium chloride. So we have a 50 ml solution containing 20% table salt. It's mixed with a 60 ml solution containing 10% table salt. What is the concentration in the final mixture? And how much salt is in the final mixture? Let's draw a little diagram to show you what's going on. Here we have a 50 ml solution and it's 20% table salt. I then have a, another solution, the 60 ml in there, and it is 10%. I'm then going to mix this and this all together to make a new solution. The new solution, what's the final volume going to be? Well, I'm going to take my 50 plus my 60, so my final solution will be 120 ml. I got that by adding these two together. What I don't know is what my final percentage will be. Because we're mixing solutions together, we want to work with C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. To try and color code things, here's your first mixture, here's your second mixture, here's your final mixture. It can be helpful to define things. This is going to be my V1. This is the volume of my first solution. Here is my C1. Here is my C2. Here is my V2. Here is my final volume. What I don't know again is my final concentration. If you look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables. And I've defined five of them here. So all I need to do is sub in my knowns and solve for the one unknown I don't have. Let's do that now. 20% times 50 mils. Notice I'm putting my units in the equation plus concentration two, 10% times 60 mils, and that's equal to, I don't know what my final concentration will be, but my final volume is 110 mils because I added these two up. When working with numbers and percents, make sure you convert these over to what they would be in terms of a decimal. This here, 20% is 20 over 100. This one here, 10% is 10 over 100. Percent means per 100. So here I get 0 0.20 times 50 mils. I then add to that 0 0.10 times 60 mils. And then finally, this doesn't change, 110 mils. Let's now work that out. 20% of 50 is 10 mils. 10% of 60, 6 mils. And then I have 110 mils times my CF. Combine those two values together, 16 mils equals 110 mils times my final concentration. Here I'm multiplying 110 mils by my final concentration. I want to isolate that on its own, so I do the opposite. I divide both sides by 110 mils. These cancel each other out, and I'm left with CF being equal to, notice here as well, notice my units are mills and mills, they cancel each other out. So this will be 16 divided by 110, which when I do that, I get 0 0.145, and that repeats, the four and the five repeat. What did I ask for in my final answer? I wanted to know uh, what the concentration was, and here our concentration was in percent. So let's convert this back to percentage here. This as a percent would be 14.545 repeating over 100. Let's round this off to two significant digits. This is equal to 15%. So the new solution would be 15%. Let's write our concluding statement. Therefore, the final concentration was 15% table salt. Include that in there. 15% what? 15% battery acid? 15% oxygen? No, 15% table salt. So include the percentage and include what the actual chemical is. I did ask for one additional thing here. How much salt is in the final mixture? 
Well, let's look at that. How much salt is in the final mixture? This value came from here. This is 16 divided by 110. What do these things represent? This is my total final solution. Total solution. And this is my sodium chloride. Therefore, there were 16 milliliters sodium chloride in my final solution of 110 mils. Sodium chloride is a solid. Normally we don't talk about solids in terms of milliliters, but we can. If we have the density of any of these chemicals, we can switch between grams and milliliters, no problem. This will be the topic of a future lecture. Let's look at one more problem. You're working in the lab. You need 15% acid for a certain test. However, your supplier only ships a 10% solution and a 30% solution. You could have the company supply you with a 15% acid solution, but it may cost a lot of money. So oftentimes it's cheaper just to buy what's available and then do your dilutions in-house to save on money. So what it says here, we decide to, to make our solution by mixing our 10% solution with our 30% solution. And in the end, we want to make a 15% solution. How much do we need? I need 10 liters total of 15% acid. So the question is, is how many liters of 10% solution and 30% solution do we need to use? Let's define our variables. We'll say let X be the volume of my 10% solution and it'll be in liters. And we'll say, let Y be the volume of our 30% acid solution. And again, this is in liters. Notice we have units, so we put those into our let statement. We're mixing things together. So we're going to use C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. If you want a little diagram here, we're taking our 10% solution and we're taking our 30% solution. We're going to mix them together a certain volume to make up a 15% solution. What are our variables now? We have the concentration. We don't have the volume. The volume here will be X. We have the concentration. We don't have the volume. The volume here will be Y. We have the final concentration and we have the final volume. So notice I have two unknowns. Remember systems of linear equations? If we have two unknowns, we need two separate equations. Let's just work on the first one for now and then we'll build the second equation. Let's substitute in the values we know and our variables. C1, concentration one, is 10%. V1, volume of one, we don't know. That will be X. We then add to that our second solution. Concentration of our second solution is 30%. And the volume, we don't know. We made that Y. Finally, our final concentration, we know what that's going to be. It's going to be 15% acid. And our final volume, we know what that's going to be. It's right here, 10 liters. Remember, when we're multiplying percents, convert them to decimals first. This will give me 0.1x plus 0.3y, and that is equal to 15% of 10. We get 1.5 here. This is my first equation. Remember, we have two unknowns. We need two equations. This is equation one. What is equation two going to be now? Now, remember, we're taking our volume one and our volume two. We're mixing them together, and we get our final volume. Final volume will be 10 liters. So here's our second equation. X plus Y. This is our volume of our 10% acid plus the volume of our 30% acid. And that will be a total of 10 liters. So here is equation number two. We will now use our knowledge of using algebra to solve systems of linear equations to solve both X and Y. Let's solve for Y here. Now that I have Y solved, 
I will sub that in here. So I'm going to substitute y into equation one, giving me 0.1x plus 0.3. We're putting in what y is from the other equation, and that's equal to 1.5. Distribute this. minus let's collect like terms we'll move the three to the other side making it minus three 1.5 minus three negative 1.5 let's divide both sides by the coefficient in front of x to isolate x on its own these cancel out x is equal to negative divided by a negative will be a positive. 1.5 divided by 2, we get 7.5. Don't forget, we're not done yet. We'll sub x equals 7.5. Now remember, substitute it into the original equation. 7.5 plus y equals 10, y equals 10 minus 7.5, so y is equal to 2.5. So here we have x and y. What was x and y again? x was the volume of our 10% acid, and y was the volume of our 30% acid. Both of them, you can see, are in liters. Let's now write our concluding statement. Therefore, Mix 7.5, what are our units? Our units were liters. 7.5 liters of our 10% acid solution with 2.5 liters of my 30% acid solution to get 10 liters of 15% acid. A lot of work with this one. You have to understand both word problems and systems of linear equations. One thing I want to point out here. We have two containers. We want to mix acid and water. I will make my water blue and I'll make my acid red just for fun because acid is dangerous. What do you do? Do we add acid to water? Do we add water to acid? One of them is correct, and one of them may seriously injure you. When you dilute acid, it can be an exothermic reaction, meaning it releases heat. If I add water directly into my acid, what will happen is it could spurt up into the air, the acid, and get in your face. So what you should do instead is... If you want to dilute acid, you add acid to water. How I remember this, I was taught this many years ago. It still sticks with me to this day. You want to add acid to water. You say this phrase, you say it with a Boston accent, Boston, Massachusetts. You say, you do what you oughta, you add acid to water. It's kind of silly, but if you remember that, You'll always add acid to water. So do what you oughta, add acid to water. So again, this is good. This is very bad. I bring this up because we're talking about mixing acids. So do what you oughta, add acid to water. There are several practice questions here. Question one, question two, and question three. Give these a try on your own. I'll write down the answers. And we'll take one or two of them up.
So here's your answers. I'm not going to take up question number one. It's very similar to the previous question. However, notice our units will be in grams. So how many grams of a 15% solution by mass? So here we're talking about percent weight by weight. We'll talk about this more in the future. In the previous question with acid, we were talking about volume by volume, liters. Now we're talking about grams. But the method is identical to the way we just did it with a system of linear equations using C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. And then we add up the mass of the two to make 50 grams. Let's take up this one. How many grams of a 5.2% solution of NaOH is required to raise the concentration of 150 grams of 8.4 NaOH to 12%? So again, we're mixing things together. This one's a bit different though. What we're going to do is we're going to have a solution here, 150 grams of our 8.4% solution. We want to raise that up so it's 12%. To do that, we're going to add in 15.2% solution. We're going to add some of that in here. We're not going to add all of it. We're just going to add some of it until the final concentration is 12%. So what am I asking for? I'm asking for how many grams of my 15% solution. So let's create my let statement. Let X be the mass of my 15.2% NaOH solution. And my units will be in grams, as opposed to kilograms, micrograms, nanograms, or even pounds. Mass can be represented in many different ways. So let's use our equation. C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. So what do we have here now? Let's define our variables. I used to do this in my physics class. You'd have so many variables and it would be hard to keep track of them all. So what I would do, I'd just write them all down the side. and I would define them all, sort of here. That way I know which ones I have and which ones I don't have. So concentration one, we have that, 15.2%. What's V1, our volume? Well, we're actually not dealing with a volume, we're dealing with a mass. This still works. So instead of dealing with liters here, these will all be in grams. So how many grams are in my initial solution? How much are we adding in? We don't know. I define that as my unknown. Let X be the mass of this solution. Now, C2, we know the concentration. We're adding it to a solution that's already present, 8.4%. And there is 150 grams of this solution. What's our final concentration going to be? We asked for a 12% solution. Now, what's our final volume? I don't know that one. I'm not too sure of that just yet. We'll come back to that. So let's sub in the values we do know. 15.2% times X plus 8.4% times 150 grams. And that's equal to 12%. And we'll just leave this as VF for now. You can see I technically have two unknowns here. This is what I'm trying to solve. But in the process of this, I don't actually know what my final volume is going to be. So I need a second equation for that. It's pretty simple, actually. Before we get that second equation, let's just simplify this. Remember, convert all of your percents into decimals and work it out. 0 0.084 times 150, 12.6. So here is equation number one. Let's build equation number two. Equation number two, I want to eliminate my VF. So what's my final volume going to be? In this case, again, it's not volume, it's mass. Well, I'm going to be adding in X number of grams of this solution to this many grams of the other solution. When I add those together, this is my final volume. 
equation two. So now you can see, we just sub this in for VF and we solve. Now that we've eliminated one of our two variables and we only have one variable remaining, we can now solve this. Let's put all of the X's on one side and all of my numbers on the other side. Collect like terms now. And then divide both sides by the coefficient in front of X to isolate X on its own. Here's X. The question now is what do we round this to? You can see right here, I've asked you to round to two significant digits. Again, I want you to just focus on getting the solution done. I don't want you to worry about significant digits right now. So I'm just telling you how many digits I want in the final answer. Two significant digits. One, two, look the number beside it. This rounds up to 170. Units is grams. Concluding statement. What was this here? This was X is the mass of the 15.2% solution of NaOH. Therefore, add 170 grams of my 15.2% solution of NaOH to 150 grams of my 8.4% NaOH solution to make a 12% solution of NaOH. Another note here, NaOH. It's a very strong base. We use it in the lab quite often to pH our solutions. If we have to increase the pH, that means make it more basic, we'll add a concentrated solution of NaOH to our chemical. NaOH comes in little chips. It doesn't come as a powder, like little discs almost. When should you make up your NaOH solution, your stock solution? Find a cold day, make it up that day. A trick I used to do in the lab when it was quite cold because of the regulations, there needs to be a high turnover of air inside these laboratories. Quite often on an extremely cold day, like we have here sometimes in Canada, the heating system can't keep up with the airflow. Therefore, the lab is extremely cold. I remember a few days we actually had to close the lab because it was too cold to work in. On the days when it's just sort of cold, I make up my NaOH that day. Why do I do that? When you add the NaOH to water, it's also an exothermic reaction, meaning it releases heat. I make it up in a little 100 ml bottle, put it in my pocket and walk around the lab and it's like a little heating pad the whole day. Maybe not the whole day, an hour at least. So be aware when making up NaOH, it's gonna get hot. Question number three. This is a tough one. I wouldn't be surprised if you had a hard time with this one. Let's look at question number three now. We're looking at mixing tin with lead together. Now notice I've put the symbols for both tin and lead here. Oftentimes chemical symbols are easy to understand. C is carbon, O is oxygen. It's the first letter of the actual word. Some elements are a bit different. For instance, tin, it's SN. Lead, it's PB. Those seem super random. And at first glance, it doesn't seem to make any sense at all. But remember, a long time ago, Scientists only worked in Latin. That was the common language of scientists. The words for tin and lead indicate the symbols. The Latin word for tin is stanum. Therefore, that's where the S and the N come from. The Latin word for lead is plumbum. P-L-U-M-B-U-M. I must say that's my kid's favorite. So that's where these symbols come from. Other chemicals have different symbols. For instance, tungsten, the symbol's W. Why is that? Well, in German, tungsten is Wolfram. Therefore, that's where the W comes from. Anyways, enough of the chemistry lesson. Let's get back into this equation here. 
So how much tin and how much lead must be added to 800 pounds of my alloy? Remember, an alloy is a mixture of two metals. We've mixed together some tin, we've mixed together some lead, and it's made a new chemical. That's a mixture of the two. We we're going to add to 800 pounds of an alloy. Uh, the alloy has 50% tin, 25% lead. We want to make an alloy that is 60% tin and 20% lead. This looks like a challenging one. Let's just deal with it one step at a time. Let X be the mass of tin. And this is going to be in pounds. Let Y be the mass of lead. And this is also going to be in pounds. Why in pounds? Because that's what was given in the statement. Now here we have two unknowns. As a result, I need two separate equations. This is how we're going to get those two equations. We're going to deal with the composition of those two chemicals separately for now. We're going to deal with tin over here, and we're going to deal with lead over here. It's a mixture problem. I'm adding a certain amount of tin to an alloy that already exists to increase the amount of tin. So let's look at that now. Remember, we're going to use C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. We're adding it to an alloy. The alloy already has 50% tin. So that is the concentration in the alloy. This will be my alloy to start with. This will be the tin I add, and this will be my final alloy. What about V1? We already know that. It's right here, 800 pounds. We also know our final concentration of tin. It's right here, 60%. So we know some of these values. What about the other values? Let's start putting them in and we'll see where this goes. So C1, this is the alloy we're adding our tin to. So this is 50% and it is 800 pounds. Now here, we're adding tin. What's the concentration of tin in tin? Let me clarify that a bit. What's the concentration of tin in pure tin. If it's pure, it's 100% pure, meaning the concentration is 100% tin. How much are we adding? I don't know. That's what X is. Finally, our final concentration, we have that. It's going to be 60%. Now, what's our final volume going to be? Final volume, this is a bit different. We have our initial alloy, we have the amount of tin added, and we're adding in something else. We're adding in lead. So in the end, this is going to be 800 plus X plus Y. This is going to be quite the question, as you can see. Let's start working this out. 50% of 800, we have 400. 100% of X is just X. We'll now distribute to all three terms on the inside. 60% of 800, this is going to be 480 plus 0.6x plus 0.6y. We'll now collect like terms. Let's put all of our x's on one side, all of our numbers on the other side. This is x minus 0.6x is equal to 480 minus 400 plus 0.6y. Collect like terms now, collect those together, collect those together. 0.4x is equal to 80 plus 0.6y. Here is equation number one. Now let's use the same technique. In this case, we'll do it for lead. Again, we have C1V1 plus C2V2 equals CFVF. Starting concentration was how much lead? It was 25% lead. What was the starting mass? 800 pounds. Then we add the concentration. We're adding pure lead to it. What's the concentration of lead and pure 100% lead? It's 100%. We don't know what that is. We call that Y. Right up here, Y. 
We then make this equal to, what's our final concentration? Final concentration needs to be 20% lead, right? We're going from 25 down to 20%, so it's decreasing. Interesting. So this is going to be our final concentration, which is 20%, and our final volume or mass will be 800 pounds plus the amount of tin we're adding plus the amount of lead we're adding. Let's work this out. 25% of 800, 200, 100% of Y is Y. Distribute this value to all three terms inside the brackets. 20% of 800, 160, plus 0.2X, plus 0.2Y. Again, let's put all of our X's on one side and all, of my, and all of our other values on the other side. Collect like terms. And there you have your second equation. So here's the two equations you're going to be working with. You have two unknowns, you have two equations. Now let's get rid of one of those variables. Let's get rid of the y variable. I'm looking at this coefficient, I'm looking at this coefficient. What's the lowest common denominator between say six and eight? That's going to be 24. Let's convert both of these to 2.4. So to convert this to 2.4, I have to multiply by four. To multiply this to 2.4, I have to multiply this by three. So let's do that now. So equation one times four, we get, multiply every term in there by four. Do the same thing here, equation number two, we're gonna multiply everything by three. As I write this down, I'm just going to flip this around so that my like terms line up on the next line. So multiply every term by three. So here, we'll say this is equation three and this is equation four. Notice we have both of these with the same coefficient. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Equation three, subtract equation four. By doing that, in essence, I'm just flipping the sign on everything, so those all become negative. Combine them together now. Now what do you see? The y disappears, and the x is already set as one, so x is equal to 200. What's our units? It's pounds. So we solve for x. Let's now solve for y. So let's sub x equals 200 into equation one. I can't see equation one, let's do equation two instead. So here we have 40 plus 0.8y is equal to 0.2x. We're going to remove the x and put in its place 200, right? Right from here. Let's now solve that. 0.2 times 200, that equals 40. 0.8, y, move the 40 to the other side, 40 minus 40. Looks like a strange answer. Divide both sides by 0.8 to isolate that on its own, still is correct. Y is equal to zero pounds. That's actually the correct answer. Our concluding statement, therefore mix 200 pounds of tin with no lead to the 800 pounds of alloy. Ask yourself, does that make sense? our concentration of tin went up. So that means I would have to add additional tin. Now our concentration of lead went down. How's that possible? Well, you can see I added no lead, but by adding more tin, I've increased the final volume. Therefore, by adding no 
additional lead. In fact, I've diluted the lead. I've decreased its concentration. As you can see, this is a very challenging problem. We're dealing with alloys here, mixing things together. If you're going into CHY, you better know how to do this. For this, we had two unknowns. We had to know how much lead and how much tin to add. As a result, we needed two separate equations. When dealing with concentrations of chemicals, you ignore all the other chemicals. However, they do take up volume in the final solution. But when calculating the concentration, it has no bearing. You deal with each chemical individually. Pretty large problem. In today's lecture, we sort of had a culmination of everything we've learned so far about word problems, systems of linear equations and algebra, chemistry and percents, rearranging, many, many different concepts at play here. Again, if you lack understanding in any one of these concepts, you can't fully answer this question. So once again, I will advise you, if you're having difficulty with anything here, try and pinpoint what the concept you're having a problem with is and study that. That's actually advice I give students all the time when they're studying. They say, sir, I studied for eight hours straight and I didn't get a good mark. What happened? Well, what are you studying? I like to do this and I'm really good at it, so I studied that. Well, no, if you're, if you're good at it, you don't need to study it. You already know it. You need to spend time on the stuff you need practice with. You need to ask questions about the stuff you don't enjoy. Perhaps you don't enjoy it because you don't truly understand it. So when studying, it's not about the quantity of studying, it's about the quality of studying. Something you already know, don't take any time studying that. You already know it. That's all for today. Until next time.